The news of the record temperature coincided with a big break in the ice on Pine Island, where an iceberg 300 square kilometers in area calved from a glacier last weekend. Giant blocks of ice have always broken off Antarctica's ice shelves, but in places like Pine Island, the losses are speeding up. Scientists are worried they're a forewarning of even larger events as climate change drives higher rates of thaw on the frozen continent. A new study says if temperatures continue to go up in Antarctica, global sea levels could rise by up to one and a half meters by the year 2100. At Chile's Escudero base on King George Island, the ice and snowpack has melted almost entirely this year. It's the first time we see a lack of snow that is so impressive. It really caught our attention. We left some sensors installed. We've seen temperatures over 13 degrees. In the last 40 years, ice loss in the Antarctic has increased sixfold. And as it continues to melt, the warm temperatures are also having an impact on wildlife like chinstrap penguins. Populations of them have plunged dramatically. We did find one colony on Elephant Island that had a very large colony that had declined about 77 uh, percent. That's a tremendous loss over a very short period of time. And with January of 2020 setting new heat records, there's no sign the melt is going to slow anytime soon. Let's talk more about this story. We have Derek Williams from DW Science with us. Hi, Derek. You know, record, we've seen record temperatures really across the planet. So does this really come as a surprise that we're seeing this on Antarctica? No, it doesn't. And, and actually, because we have so many different numbers to get through, then, then I want to give you a feeling for how dramatic it is. This latest record is nearly a full degree Celsius more than the previous record, which was set back in 2015. That's, mm. that's a lot for this, for this part of the world. It's not surprising at all because 2019 was the second hottest year on, on record. And things very likely aren't going to change. This past month, January, was the hottest January that we've ever seen on record. So the Antarctic is one of the fastest warming regions on the planet, you know, and it's, we focus a lot more on the Arctic because it's closer to most of humanity. But really what's happening there, it's, the ice has gone back around sixfold in the last 40 years in the Antarctic. So that's a vast amount of water. And some researchers even think that this giant ice sheet that's, that's covering the southernmost continent could in the coming century or centuries disintegrate completely, which would be have disastrous, disastrous consequences. Yeah, what would those consequences be for sea levels, for example? Well, for sea levels, the worst case scenario is say it could get up to about 60 centimeters of sea levels, uh, sea level rise by the end of the century. That's that's a lot. Don't forget that other glaciers all over the world are also melting at the same time. So the 60 centimeters is just from Antarctica. And so this a new study that looks at modeling sort of this ice melt in the Antarctic says that altogether that could add up to 1.5 meters by the year 2100. That's not out of the question. That's a lot, a lot higher than former models. And if that happened, it would put places, low-lying regions, like, for example, Bangladesh or the Florida Panhandle or here in Europe, Venice, mm -hmm. which has already experienced really severe flooding this, this, in this past year, um, it would put them under even more pressure. So um, if the entire ice sheet melted in Antarctica, it would actually raise sea levels by three meters, which is an even more disastrous scenario. So that is dramatic enough. What about the other consequences we could see from having this unstable climate situation? Well, there, it's, it's impacting very severely also on animal populations in the Arctic. You know, it's very hard to gather data about animal populations in the Arctic because it's just so remote. It's one of the most remote places on Earth. But for example, it's, there's a new study that shows that the population of chinstrap penguins has, along the western coastline has crashed by over 75% since similar studies were carried out back in the 1970s. And really in the in the Antarctic, it all comes down to, to, to the krill population. Krill are these small shrimp-like creatures that there are vast, vast swarms of them in the, in the waters around Antarctica, and the entire ecosystem there depends on them. Everything eats krill or eats something that eats krill. And so if that population has been shown in, due to commercial fishing, obviously, as well, but it, the krill are a cold water animal. They don't like it when it gets warmer. And the long-term impact of warming waters around Antarctica, if it impacts heavily, even more heavily on the krill population, it could bring the entire sort of ecosphere, the Antarctic ecosphere edifice into, in, into, a, into a very bad place. All right, Derek Williams from DW Science. Thank you so much for bringing us that story.